Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about redo and undo concepts. Let's take an example uh, of uh, an update statement. Let's say somebody is giving an uh, submit a update uh, update uh, table t and then set say a is equal to 5. So this table t uh, has one column a. So table t, if you select star from table t, it should give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, I have 5 rows. And then when somebody is saying that update t set a is equal to 5, where a is equal to 1. So this is, you know, let's try to analyze whenever somebody is giving this kind of statement, what is really going on. So this is my SGA and then I have my data in my database. So let's say this is data file and this is my online redo and there are some some other things are there but for this simplicity I'm just going to consider that I just have a data file where the table T's data is stored and then I have an SGA I have something called buffer cache so this is DP buffer cache wherever DP buffer cache and then I have a redo buffer Okay, so whenever this statement is coming, update t set a is equal to 5. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a buffer dot t here. Okay, so that means like this a is equal to 1, you know, the value of a is equal to 1, so it was 1, and I make it 5 now. So, when I make it 5, so I make this buffer, you know, db buffer dot t, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to store enough information, okay, enough information on the redo buffer so that I can reproduce this transaction again, okay. So in this case, what's going to happen is that redo buffer is going to contain enough information to redo this update statement. That means to basically update in the buffer cache you know, the value 5 okay so it was before it was 1 and then it become 5 because of this update statement enough info to z2 all right and then what we are also going to do oracle is going to see the old value so the old value in this case was 1 that old value will be also stored in this buffer okay so in, in the buffer cache we are storing the updated value and also we are going to store the old value or we will store some information by which we can basically <clears throat> we can we can get the old values or in other words we can ensure that this transaction has never happened okay so how do you ensure that this transaction has never happened if you make sure that you know in the dirty buffer instead of 5 if i make it 1 then, then it is equivalent to this transaction has not happened so essentially what we are going to store we are going to store the original value or old value in an area that area is called undo area Notice that this undo area is part of the database buffer cache. Okay, so in the in the DB buffer cache, we are going to store the new value, that is five, and also we are going to have the old value that was one. And eventually, like you know, so so this is what is the situation at this update statement, and then somebody else is going to give more update, delete, and all this thing. Eventually this is going to like you know you know this this buffer cache is going to filled with different values and notice that in every three seconds or if somebody give a commit or if this redo is one third filled 
or one MB field, whichever is fast, whichever the sooner. In that case, log writer is going to write to the online read to log file. So LGWR is going to come and then going to write from the this thing to read to log file. Then essentially, at at some point of time, eventually, this you know this data you know the database db buffer cache is going to be also written to the data file. So notice that this pipe, okay, this pipe also is going to be written if somebody does a commit here. So that means update set five. So this become pipe in table. So that means in my table the block will contain pipe now. Then I am also going to store my undo area in another file. This is one data file, another data file that is called undo file. Okay. So essentially what we are going to do, we are going to store the, the original data or old data in the undo file. So that means one is going to be stored here. And this undo file is a specific, you know, is a size of specific file. It, it cannot increase up, you know, in, in indefinitely. Rather, this file is going to be reused once this file is filled. Okay. So we'll see like, you know, how that, how those things are going to, going to help you. So essentially, this is the concept of undo that we, you know, undo is there to make sure that we can revert back the transaction. In this case, the transaction is update t set a is equal to 5. The net effect of this transaction is to go and then update a row which was before 1 and now become 5. Then I need to keep the new values and also I need to keep the old values. And the reason behind keeping the old values is that we can revert back if necessary to, to the original um, state. Okay, so this is what is the concept of redo and undo, and the essential difference is redo is that redo can enough information to to do the transaction again, and undo is it will contain enough information to revert back the effect of the transaction. So we are going to discuss in this video more on how undo is going to help. Undo is going to help you in three scenarios. One, on rollback. Second, undo is going to give you that read consistency result. So, by using undo, or this is called multi-versioning database, Oracle gives Oracle provides you read consistency result. And number three is going to give you flashback query. So, it will allow you to do flashback query. So, undo is basically an important component that because of that technology, because of that, the flashback query technology is, uh, is, is going, to, going to happen. Okay. So, what are we going to do? I am going to let us take a look at rollback, how it will going to help you in, ro in rolling back. Say, let us basically what I am going to do, I am going to take this diagram because I need this diagram in my next thing. I want to redo, redo event again. Okay, so <clears throat> so whenever you are giving so you are giving this update t set a is equal to five where a is equal to one. So this is the update statement you want to do. So now let's say you want to roll back. So when you do this update, so let's say assume that uh, in the previous value was one and that become five and then old value is stored in this undo segment, also undo area. Okay. Now, whenever you are doing rolling back, so if you give rollback, what is going to happen is that this from this, you know, undo undo segment, undo uh, undo information, that is going to come and then replace in five. So basically, you know, if you if you look at the buffer cache like this, so this is the dirty buffer which is a new value which is a is equal to five, and then the other buffer, uh, you know the the, the one that contains the original value contains right now one. So what is going to happen in the, in the rollback, 
we are going to read the undo undo area and then get and replace that one in the five. So that means this five is going to go go away and then so this five is no more there and instead of that we are going to have a one here. That one is copied from the old location to this buffer and then like you now if you, if you do the rollback then next time somebody is going to do flushing the disk so we are going to flush the disk to the value one so this is how a rollback works and eventually let's say for example if you know this five and one it may it may happen that if you are if you are doing a lot of transactions so in that case it may happen that whenever you want to do a rollback this old value may not be there here the old value may be there here in the undo segment right so in that case what you are going to do you are going to read this value to this buffer cache and then you are going to copy to the dirty buffer okay so that is how rollback really works the next one is about read consistency query so how it is going to give you read consistency so let's take an example our table t this double T has 200,000 rows. Okay, so it's a very big table, and this table has 200,000 rows. Let's say in one SQL uh, session, so in one SQL session, somebody gives select star from T. And let's say this happened at 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. So 7 a.m., somebody gives select star from T. And then in that case, what is going to happen? The you know this query is going to let's say this is your buffer cache and your data files. So this this query is basically going to read the table T and then get all the rows to the buffer. So that that's how it is going to happen. And then since this is a two hundred thousand rows, so let's say this will take you know five minutes to complete. This query is going to take select start from uh, star from t is going to take five minutes that means at 7 0, 5 a.m this query is going to complete all right and then assume like you know this data file is going to look like something you know i'm just drawing some diagram so this data file for this table t will have let's say this is one row second row third row four row fourth row like that right so so what happens is that when this at 7 a.m. when it started, let's say that time the SCN number, the system change number for the database is 1001. Okay, so that means so that is the time when the SCN number was 1001. So that means in all of the data blocks, whenever I'm going to go on and figure out, there will be a SCN number there in the in the header saying that 1001. Let's say another session another SQL session is going to give an update okay so update let's say he give update table t set a is equal to 5 where a is equal to say the very last row 199999 okay so that means the very last row like you know this is one block and then maybe another block like this okay so this in the last this is the last block and then somebody has updated this value to something else notice that this value is updated and also this guy does a commit if he does a commit a new scn number is going to be generated and then in this data block for this for this uh, row this row is you know scn number is say 1002 the next scn number is 1002 okay so if this is this is how it is going to happen now let's say whenever this select star from t is is running and then you know eventually at you know this this is this thing's happening at 702 am so in the first two minutes you know two, past two minutes somebody has gone and updated then the question that will ask that whenever we started the query at 7 a.m. with SCN number 1001, this value was something different. Okay. And at 702, this value has been changed and something different. So whenever we are doing a select, what value should we see? Remember that Oracle provides you read consistency. 
what does it mean? That mean at the time of seven, I need to give you know whatever the data at that time. Okay, so at at seven a.m. my data used to be the old data, so therefore I need to give the old value here. So whenever this thing is reading, so now for this query for select star from MP, Oracle is going to read from this, you know, all this, uh, you know, blocks, and then everywhere it will check what is the SCN number, and it will since the SCN number is 1001 here, all right. So therefore, it will say valid data, valid data, valid data, and valid data. So whenever it is coming to here, it will see that SCN number is 1002. Which is happened after this query started, so therefore it is going to take a detour here. It's not going to read this one. Instead of that, it you know Oracle is going to see what was the value at the time of SCN 1001. And notice that all these things is going to be stored. The old value is going to be stored in the undo segment, right? So essentially, like you know, what we're saying that undo in in undo segment, I I will see the old value. Therefore, what I'm going to do instead of reading the new value, it will reconstruct the old value from the redo from the undo segment. Okay, and then whatever this that will get, that is the value to return it back. All right. So therefore, the read consistency uh, things happen because we store the old result. Okay. So that 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 is and this is how. on to segment is going to help to give you a read uh, consistency read consistent result next things about is about flashback query so this flashback query is a feature that if you say select star from emp if i will get select star from emp i will get the result what is the current uh, data in employee But is it not is a good idea that if I have to know somehow how many employees there in the beginning of the year? That means if I give, is there any way that I can do select star from EMP as of a particular timestamp or particular date? Okay, that is essentially what this flashback query uh, is about. So flashback query is going to give you a result. Flashed back to a particular time. How how is going to going to be implemented? Again, because you know who is going to store the old data. The old data is going to be stored in the undo segments, right? So basically, you know, whenever we are doing select star from EMP as of some date, let's say that date is zero one zero one two thousand ten or two thousand eleven. In that case, what I'm going to do? I'm going to find out what is the SCN number at that time. Okay, then if I find out what is SCN number at that time, then I'm going to go and then check my data blocks. Okay, so if I check my data block, if so let's say that SCN number, the current SCN number is 1000, and the SCN number of 0101-2001, let's say was 900. All right, so therefore, let's say this is the this is the block one, and this block one has been modified. Let's say uh, you know this SCN number is uh, here nine nine one, and then let's say another block is there where some data is stored about this employee table, and then let's say that SCN number is eight hundred. Okay, so therefore whenever I'm going to do a select star from EMP as of this SCN number nine hundred, <coughs> I'm not going to go to consider this one. Rather, what is the equivalent block? I'll reconstruct this block with respect to a SCN number of 900. That means I'm going to go to the redo to the undo segment and figure out what was the value at the SCN number 900. Then when I see the SCN number 800, okay, this is fine because we want to find out you know what happened before SCN number 900. So therefore, whatever the results is there, I'm going to take those things. So essentially, the flashback query implementation is done. Because of now by undo seg undo undo segments, by reading the undo segment at proper time, we can always go back and then reconstruct the result as if that was happened, you know, at that point of time. So now the comparison between redo and undo. 
Okay. So, what does read to contents? Read to contents contains enough information to do the transaction again, to do it again. Undo contains enough information to revert back the transaction. Okay, so this is what is the first characteristic. And second characteristic is that redo is going to be stored in the online redo log file. Whereas undo is going to be stored in the undo segment. Okay. So on the segment, as, as you saw, the on the segment is something different than the than the, the data files. And whereas you know online read log file is a separate file which is a you know what the log writer is going to write. Then why I need redo? The 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 main purpose of redo is to do instance recovery. And the purpose of undo is to help in rolling back read consistency and flashback query okay so this is what is the summarization between redo and undo and we need both of them we need to we need both of them to work in a very coordinated way to make the database works